If you are swamped with emails, I have been there. For five years, I managed a vacation rental company that received on average 300 emails a day. So I developed a set of four email techniques that work so that you can stay on top of your inbox, save time, and be more fulfilled in the workplace. Hi, my name's Amy. Let's nerd out. The acronym that I created for these techniques is STAR and the S is for sorting your emails. Your first line of defense when staying on top of your inbox is to reduce the number of emails that you receive. And it may seem obvious, but I highly recommend unsubscribing to any of those newsletters that no longer serve you. This will really start to clear out some of that clutter. And if you do want to continue to receive newsletter emails, then I will show you how we can handle those appropriately in further steps of this video. Additionally, Microsoft has some other handy tools for minimizing the number of emails that you receive. And if we right click on an email, then one of them is the ability to ignore a conversation. So here in this instance, Outlook will delete all of the messages for the selected conversation, except for items in the sent folder. So this is great if you are somehow swindled into an email conversation and you just want to ignore it because it does not really apply to you. Some other nifty tools, if we right click once again, then we can head on down to the report and here you can report phishing. So this is gonna be reporting scams as well as reporting items as junk, which will automatically move those types of emails to your junk folder so that you won't see them in the first place. And last but not least, we also have the ability to block a sender. So if somebody is pestering you, then you can simply block them to no longer receive their emails. On average, a person receives 120 emails per day. And every time that I receive an email, I walk through this process to sort my inbox. The goal here is to clear out the inbox so that we are not wasting time rereading the same email. Firstly, if an email will take me less than five minutes, then I will action on it right away. And if the email is important, then I will go ahead and archive the email. This is typically for like things that are tax or legal items. And I find that this is far more effective than putting my emails into folders that I usually just end up losing my emails. And that search bar at the top of Outlook is actually really beneficial in finding and locating those emails. If I've determined that I don't need to access that email again, then I will simply go ahead and delete that email. Alternatively, you can simply press delete. Then periodically, you can go down to your deleted folder right click it and select empty folder to free up space in your email. Next, if an email is going to take me more than five minutes, then I will create a task from that email to sync with planner or to do. So let's go ahead and expand this my day option at the top right and just make sure that you are on that to do tab. Then we can simply select the email and drag and drop it to create a task item. Once the task is created, then we can head on over to do from the Outlook application and you will find that task created under this tasks area and it is right here. So if we go ahead and select that task, then we can easily open up that email from the task area all without leaving the Outlook app. Alternatively, if you are more familiar with Planner in Microsoft Teams, then you will find those tasks under my tasks and under private tasks they will also appear under all tasks. I have done separate tutorials on to do as well as the new planner in Microsoft Teams and included them in the description below for your reference. Now, there is one other way that we can easily create tasks. And you'll notice here that this task has the subject of the email as the task item. So let's go back into our emails. And this time I want to make the task to be searching restaurants for this Portugal work retreat. We can highlight that text and then we will see a new menu appear. And if we hover over this check icon, then we can simply select create task. Then when we go back into Microsoft to do, we will see that that new task has been created and the title of that task is the text that we highlighted. Once again, if we select this task, 
then we can open up the email so it's linked to that email thread just like the other one for a very similar experience. And if you would prefer to create a folder to simply move these items to, rather than creating a to-do item, then I will show you a little trick for that in just a moment. In some cases, you might have an email come into your inbox and you want to make it disappear and come back at a later date and time. So in this case, what we can do is right click this email and we can go down to snooze. So here we can make this email disappear from our main inbox and not appear until 3 p.m. this evening after six or tomorrow or the weekend or even a custom date. So after 3 p.m. today, I'm going to have a bit more time to focus on this email. So I'm going to go ahead and snooze this now. So we will see that that email has now been removed from our inbox. But say your manager follows up with you and asks you to respond to it right away, then you can access that email from the snoozed folder. And from here, we can see that that email is going to appear at 3 p.m. today. Lastly, there may be times when you want to forward an email and delegate a task to somebody else, but create a follow up to follow up with that person. In this case, what we can do is you can simply select this flag message icon on the email, or we can go up to flag. I'm going to go ahead and select tomorrow, and we can see that this email has now been flagged. Now the great thing about the flagged emails is similar to to-do and tasks. We can locate these flagged emails in the flagged email area of Microsoft to-do. And if we select on that task follow-up item, then we can open up the emails from here, just as we were with tasks. Additionally, within the new planner app, you'll see your flagged emails under my tasks. When we create tasks and to-do follow-ups from emails, then we need to remember to check up on them. And on average, people spend about two hours a day managing their emails. So how can we manage our time effectively? Firstly, we can schedule tasks in our calendar. So from this My Day dropdown under tasks, we can simply select a task and drag and drop it into a time slot within our calendar. And by blocking our calendar, we are creating a commitment to complete those tasks. Next, I schedule recurring time blocks to review my emails throughout the day. To do this, we can select a time that we want this time block to start. And for me, I'm always the freshest in the morning. So that's when I'm going to check my emails. We can go ahead and expand this event to show more options. And here we can give it a name, 15 minutes for emails, which is what this interval already is. And then from this repeat drop down, I'm going to go ahead and select custom and allocate this to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We can go ahead and save this and then save the recurring time block. We can see now that we have blocked time in our calendar for the first 15 minutes of every morning to read our emails. And I would recommend doing this a couple of times throughout the day. So you might wanna do one before lunchtime and then maybe at three o'clock as well. And just remember that most emails are not time sensitive and can be wait to be read during these blocks. When you're not in these timeframes, then just close out your inbox, which leads us to our next point, which is notifications. If you're receiving notifications for Outlook when your Outlook is closed, then there's one setting that I would recommend turning off. So we can head up to this gear icon, go to general and then notifications. And from here, the one that we are looking for is this notifications in Outlook. So let's select this drop down carrot and then send notifications when Outlook is closed. So I would recommend leaving this unticked so that when you are not in your emails and your Outlook is closed down, then you can enjoy deep work, which will be more fulfilling without any distractions. Most workers agree that their emails prevent them from doing their primary jobs, which leads to high stress levels, missed deadlines, and less fulfillment in the workplace because their time is spent on low level work. But we will have more time for fulfilling work if we automate our emails. Firstly, we can create rules to sort our emails into folders. I find this particularly helpful for newsletters and I have an email here 
It's a newsletter from Microsoft. So let's right click on this email, go down to rules, and then we can go create rule. From the drop down folder, you can select a folder that you've already created, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called newsletter and click save. Then we can go ahead and press OK. And then here, if we want to run this rule now, then it's going to run the rule that we've just created and automatically move them to that folder. So let's go ahead and select run this rule now. So we can see that that rule has run. And if we go down to that new folder called newsletters, then we will see that Microsoft email there. And now all future emails from this email address will also automatically be moved here. Then I also just recommend selecting the ellipses on these folder and we can go ahead and add this folder to favorites so that's at the top of your mind under your favorites bar. I set aside a little bit of time every morning to read through one of my newsletters while I have my morning coffee. The next rule that I recommend is categorizing emails that you have been CC'd on. We can see that I've been CC'd on this follow-up email from Mike to Jess, and it's really just an FYI. It's not important for me. So I'm going to go up to rules. And this time we will select manage rules and we can see that rule that we just created. So this is where you can edit it or even delete that rule. But what we want to do is create a new rule. So I'm going to give it a name. And if you are enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out. And then now we can add a condition. So if we select the drop down, then we can go when my name is on the CC line. And then the action is going to be to categorize that email from the category dropdown. You can select a predefined category or even create a new category. I'm going to go ahead and select that thumbs up category. And then here, I want to run that rule now. If we go ahead and click save, and we can see that new category has been created. But if we close out these rules, then we can see that this email has automatically been categorized with that thumbs up category. So this is a great way to create a visual for these types of emails. The third automation that I like to set up is a quick step to move specific emails to a folder. This could be beneficial for invoices or even for creating that task folder that we talked about earlier. So let's go ahead up to quick steps and select manage quick steps. Here, we can add a quick step and give it a name. So I will call this invoice and tax. And then the action this time is going to be move to. And then the folder, we will go ahead and create a new folder. Let's just call this test and we'll go ahead and click save. From here, you can add a description. And the thing that I really like about quick steps is the ability to add a shortcut. If we select the drop down, then we can have a shortcut key, control shift five, to move the selected email to this test folder. So if we go ahead and click save, then when we close out of quick steps, we can simply select this quick step button at the top here, or control shift five on the keyboard, which has now moved that email. If we go down to test, then we can see that that email has been quickly moved. So this is a great way to quickly sift through your emails and move them to designated folders with quick steps. The final automation that I recommend setting up is email templates, as you may have some standardized replies that you use regularly. So let's go ahead and reply to this email from Mike. Then from here, we can select apps and then go my templates. There are some predefined templates here that you can use or you can even create your own. I have done a whole other tutorial on this and I've linked it in the description below. Speaking of communication, if the average person receives 120 emails a day and our first line of defense when managing our emails is to eliminate them in the first place, then what can we do with the remainder? This leads us to R, which is refining our communication habits. Let's firstly take a look at this email here. We can see that Mike has said, you are welcome, Amy, stay tuned. And before that, I said, thank you, Mike, I appreciate that. 
This is quite common. We often have a tendency to reply to emails acknowledging certain things, and I'm all for that, but it does bog down our inbox. And a new way that we can acknowledge things through emails without bogging down our inbox is through reactions. So if we hover over this happy face icon, then we have some predefined emojis here that we can react to this email. I'm going to go ahead and give this a heart. And in the top right hand corner, we can see that my reaction is visible on my end. In Mike's email under notifications, he will then see my reaction to that email message. So this is a great way to acknowledge certain things in emails without bogging down each other's inbox. Another great way for minimizing back and forth with emails is to use loop components. So let's go ahead and add a table to this email to Mike. And why don't you go ahead and comment your favorite feature for managing your inbox. So now within this loop component, I'm going to send it in an email. On the left-hand side here, we have the email that Mike received from me with that loop component. And then I have the email that I sent to Mike. So I can see on my end that Mike is trying to type into the cell and his favorite feature was categorizing emails that he has been CC'd on using those rules. And we can see that this updates in real time. So loop components are a great way to collaborate and brainstorm with your team members while staying updated in real time and also minimizing the number of emails that we send back and forth. There are also other mediums for communicating with your coworkers. You can use Teams chats, the meet now function also within teams, but just remember that nothing beats human connections. So don't hesitate to pick up the phone or walk down the hallway and your eyes will really appreciate having a break from your screen while you collaborate with your coworker. For more juicy tips on managing your inbox and the new outlook, then I would highly recommend checking out this video here.